What historical fact blows your mind? I am in my early 20s, when my grandmother was a child, living in the south. An elderly neighbor would tell grandma about how when she was herself a little girl, she remembered seeing the confederate troops march by in the civil war. It's so strange to think that an event which seems so distant, really happened within two human lifespans. Edit. To clarify, this is the southern US. If you are 25 years old you have lived through more than 10% of the history of the United States of America. How deplorable the conditions were just being in the Royal Navy in the 17th century, you would work in disgusting, stupidly dangerous conditions, had more than a 50% chance of dying, and after 3 years of this they would find an excuse not to pay you at all. This is why a lot of them became pirates. There was a saying that the only difference between prison and the navy, is that in the navy you might drown too. ITHNK the craziest hit that gets me is to think that throughout all history, there was everyday people who just lived their life. Imagine, say, it's 3.000 BC. Imagine you are not a pharaoh, or a wealthy merchant, or it, you are just an average Egyptian dude. Chilling at his house in the middle of 3.000 BC. Egypt. Imagine what would your house be like. Or the night sky. Or your street. Your dinner. Your cat. Your problems. All the things that might bring you joy. History sounds so distant because when we study it we think of kings and presidents and huge ass buildings and it. And we forget that. Throughout all that crap. The majority of humankind was. As it is today. Composed by just regular people. The loss of life in the world wars. Around 38 million inches World War 1 and around 60 million inches World War 2. Just thinking about how catastrophic and damaging that must have been for people and communities is something I just can't comprehend. In World War 1 buddy battalions were common in Britain, where they would recruit and keep men together from local areas. The idea being that the connection would help morale and bring them together. Just looking at the dead from the Battle of the Somme. 72,000 plus people died from the UK and Commonwealth. Entire battalions wiped out. Entire villages and towns losing all their men and boys. Hundreds of families who knew each other. Who all on the same day find every recruited soldier from that area has died. The loss must have been unimaginable. At the Battle of Monte Cassino in 1944. The 222nd Artillery Supply Company under the Polish 2nd Corps had a bear named Wojtek that would bring artillery shells to forward gun positions. Let me repeat that. A mother duckine bear would fetch them artillery shells. Edit. Wojtek to Wojtek. Not actually a Polish speaker. Edit 2. For all people making Soviet jokes. I feel obligated to mention that this unit served under the British Army, and was composed of men who had been released from Soviet gulags and labor camps. Edit 3. Post auto corrected Monte Cassino to Monte Cassino. The number of aircraft destroyed during World War II is greater than the number of aircraft that currently exist in the entire world today. The Tale of Two Lovers, an erotic novel was one of the best-selling books of the 15th century. It was written by Pope Pius II before he assumed the papacy. Edit. Here's the link for the tale of two lovers if you're interested. The last American Civil War widow's pension was paid in 2003. Edit. Thanks to you farting Bob for reminding me that America isn't the only country. Alexander the Great defeated Darius II of the Persian Empire, the largest empire in the world at the time by meeting them in the field in open combat. And he did it twice. In the first battle, he was outnumbered 7 to 1. In the second battle, he was outnumbered 10 to 1. And he ducking decimated the Persians. Edit. Darius III. That Oxford University is older than the Aztec civilization. That Cambridge University is older than the Easter Island heads. That the Romans and the Chinese knew about each other and actually communicated semi-regularly. The last execution by guillotine was after the first Star Wars movie. In the late 1800s, writers complained that young adults are losing touch with reality. Instead of sitting at the dinner table with family they have their noses buried in a magazine. That at the same time the US Civil War was going on which killed about 600,000 people and served as probably our greatest national tragedy. 
China was in the throes of the Taiping Rebellion. The Taiping Rebellion is the largest civil conflict in human history, and best estimates put the death toll somewhere north of 20 million. Really reminds you of just how many more people live in Asia. A lot of things happened at different times to what people think, and eras we think of as being distinct blur into each other. When the Taj Mahal was built in 1632 the Portuguese had already been in control of Goa, a different part of India, for over a hundred years. Virginia was founded in 1607 when Shakespeare was still alive. Between 1613 and 1620, around the same time as Galileo was accused of heresy, and Pocahontas arrived in England. A Japanese samurai, called Hisekia Ritsuninaga sailed to Rome via Mexico, where he met the Pope and was made a Roman citizen. It was the last official Japanese visit to Europe until 1862. The last major cavalry charge took place in 1942, on the eastern front of the Second World War. It is believed that the human population dipped as low as 1000 people about 70,000 BCE. We could very well have been a few stillbirths or sabertooth maulings away from extinction. When reduced to such low numbers, the survival of a species truly teeters on a knife's edge. It's a difference of a handful of births, too few and you dip below minimum viable population. Our survival could have come down to something as trivial as some tribe finding a spring or gazelle in the nick of time. Pluto didn't even get to complete one orbit around the sun between the time it was discovered and the time it was declassified as a planet. America was one vote off from importing hippos. A bit more recent history, but in 1956, for a bet and while drunk, a man stole a small plane from New Jersey and then landed it perfectly on the narrow street in front of the bar he had been drinking at. Then, two years later, he did it again after a man didn't believe he had done it the first time. The fact that this guy stole two planes when drunk and landed them perfectly blows my mind. Here is an article about it. General Charles Lee was obsessed with his dogs to the point that he basically treated them like his children. Mr. Spada was his Pomeranian and favorite, and he routinely used to write paragraphs of his regular correspondence with John Adams, like they were from Mr. Spada. He also once refused to speak to Abigail Adams until she shook Spada's poor hello, and someone once said he would have been a great politician if his constituents each possessed four legs and a tail. Dude just loved puppies more than people. Not only did John Adams and Thomas Jefferson die within hours of one another, it was on the 4th of July, the 50th anniversary of the adoption of the Declaration of Independence. Anne Frank and MLK were born in the same year. We went on the moon, a floating vestige of the past, super far away in space, that's mental to me. Epcot, the entire theme park at Walt Disney World, was built in 3 years. It takes longer to get new shopping plazas finished today, largest construction job in the world at the time. 1. Julius Caesar was once kidnapped by pirates. He laughed at the ransom they were demanding and ordered them to increase it. He made them listen to his poetry and berated them if they complained. He threatened to crucify them and once he was set free he did just that. 2. Olga of Kiev, her husband was murdered by a rival tribe. Said tribe tried to get her to marry one of their men and she agreed. She invited them over and had her servants dig a hole and burn the visitors alive. Then she sent pigeon and sparrows with sulfur tied to their legs into the village and burned it to the ground. She was a bad bitch. I'm glossing over all of this. I could be wrong but this is what I remember. That the Roman Empire existed for over 2000 years in one form or another and there were people calling themselves Romans until the 1800. The first person to use the phrase what the deans was Shakespeare. I teach history at a high school and I realized today that we've been using guns in war for close to 600 years. Hitler was a dispatch runner in World War 1. He came face to face with the enemy, but his life was spared. Edit. Alright. I get it. There's no hard evidence that this is even true. 10th US. President John Tyler, born in 1790, has two living grandchildren. Edit. Added context about who the guy was. What is estimated to be the first written record of an encounter with Vikings essentially goes like this. 
There are some small ships approaching our little island with a monastery on it. I wonder who it will be. Their boats looks different than ones I've seen before. Hello friends welcome to our AHHHHH. No no. Comma. Everything is gone. We're all hurt. The buildings are burning. And they didn't even speak to us. The Austro-Hungarian Empire once lost 10,000 men after accidentally attacking itself over a bottle of schnapps. In the 1870 Paraguayan War, Paraguay's losses amounted to 70% of their entire male population, civilian and military. Women weren't exempt either, they just fared slightly better. Overall population loss was about 60%. It took several decades before they were considered to have recovered. The reasons for the war are almost as bizarre as the outcome. Paraguay was a ducking weird country. Not many countries try to force interbreeding of native and European populations to make everyone mixed race. And when I say force, I mean it. Paraguay, for a time, actually made it illegal to marry within your own race. Fewer still will close their borders to the outside and to the inside. If you were a foreigner caught within Paraguayan borders, you had to live in Paraguay forever. And, strangest of all, most countries, when faced with imminent war with two regional powers and a third ally of theirs, in this case Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay, would try to find a diplomatic solution. Unless you're Paraguay. If you're Paraguay, you declare war on them and conduct a drawn out guerrilla war that sees your population drop by 60% minus 70%. I mean, this was a nation of some 500,000 people declaring war against an alliance of 11 million. Yeah. It's not like they were invaded by the alliance. They declared war on the alliance. Just learned this in my history class today, there are no more living veterans of World War 1 but there are still 20,000 alive widows of World War 1 veterans. Food, the way we eat today, particularly the variety, is completely unheard of historically. The main thing I like to remind people is even 100 years ago you'd go to your local market and buy and eat the plants that are in season. Imagine if you went to get a cheeseburger and they told you they didn't have tomatoes because it's not tomato season you would look at them like they are crazy. But if you did the same thing during most of human history and demanded a crop that was out of season, they would like at you like you're the crazy one. Edit. I said 100 years because I didn't do any research and wanted to leave a bit of a safety margin. As many pointed out this change is way more recent. You Baxter beat Ford, much more recent than 100 years ago. Refrigerated trucking really didn't become widespread until the 1960s. Even when I was a kid many foods were much more seasonal. Photography is almost 200 years old. After being shot during a duel, Andrew Jackson lived with a bullet next to his heart for 39 years. Edit. As a fellow redditor pointed out, Jackson was shot first and calmly kept his composure and ended up killing the man. When speaking to an astonished friend after the incident he stated, if he had shot me through the brain, sir, I should still have killed him. That humans have been around for about 200,000 years, but we only have written records dating back 6,000. 97% of humankind's history is lost. 189 Swiss Guard defending the Holy See in 1527. 10,000 Protestant mercenaries sacked the Vatican. The Vatican defenders were some militia and the Swiss Guard. All but 42 Swiss goods sacrificed their lives to get the Pope to safety. Australia lost a war against emus. Persian leader Cambyses II used cats to defeat an Egyptian army. He had his soldiers paint cats on their shields and brought hundreds of cats and other animals that the Egyptians held sacred to the front lines. The Egyptians refused to fight the cat army and were easily defeated because of it. Source. There were other species of humans that roamed the earth until they died out either from disease or because Homo sapiens outcompeted them. Think about the different kinds of dogs and how different they are. To think about that with humans is absolutely crazy. More bombs were dropped on the country Vietnam during Vietnam War than were dropped throughout the entirety of World War II across the globe. Passenger pigeons used to darken the sky in the eastern US until they were massacred by settlers with massive shotguns called punt guns. Up to around 50 birds per shot, they became extinct. 
towering American chestnut trees, sometimes 10 feet wide and over 100 feet tall, used to fill the ground with delicious nuts in the southeast, enough that your feet would have sunk down into a vast sea of nuts, and these incredibly dominated the landscape, estimated that near 4 billion by the American Chestnut Foundation. The American chestnut trees largely died off due to non-native Chinese chestnut trees we brought over that were harboring a non-native fungus that strangles the young trees from transporting nutrients. Now the trees get the disease after just a few years when the bark splits, and the fungus can enter the cracks easily. They are also affected by root rot. Most of the eastern US used to be pine savanna oak savanna until Smokey the Bear stopped wildfires. Many of our native species are dying due to this widespread drastic change in habitat conditions. Birds are heavily affected by this. Many threatened birds and birds on the endangered species list need savanna habitat in the eastern US. On the way to Tenochtitlan, Cortez and his men passed through 20 cities that each would have been the largest city in Europe. When you think about how World War II had levels of death none of us can comprehend unless you lived through it. Then after World War II we had developed 10,000 S of ICBMs and could bring those levels of death all over the world. But we didn't. We've been around a species for 250,000 years and spent most of it dying young from disease and killing each other. I'm not sure whether this one has been posted here or not. So I'm going to post it anyway. Stalin. Freud. Hitler. Tito and Trotsky all lived within a few miles of each other in downtown Vienna, for a brief period in 1913. World War I began a year later, catalyzing the trajectory of these five to fame and infamy. Imagine if they had bumped into each other at the time. The imagination of these five being friends and then working together makes my mind run wild. Source. Edit. Added the source. The last person born in the 1800s just died, unless you live to 2100s. You're never going to meet a person who has lived in three centuries. This person lived through World War 1, World War 2, Vietnam, 9 stroke 11, Titanic, Jim Crow laws and their repeal, prohibition and its repeal, women's rights, ESP, voting, the rise of flappers, the rise of twerkers, the Great Depression, the moon landing, the Dust Bowl, rock and roll, hippies, pop, rap, electro. Frank Sinatra, Elvis, The Beatles, Michael Jackson, Babe Ruth, Muhammad Ali, every Super Bowl, every World Series, Kennedy's assassination, television, remotes, airplanes, the internet, cell phones, virtual reality video games, man-made drugs, the end of Prussia, the rise and fall of Czechoslovakia, the end of the Soviet Union, the end of Ottoman Empire, and the creation of five states. Not to mention that when they were born they were the youngest person, and when they died as the oldest person, there was a completely different set of people on the planet than when they were born. This person lived through some of the most significant moments in human history. Truly blows me away. Edit. I mistook the Prussian Empire for ending in the 1900s. However she did witness the rise and fall of Yugoslavia, the rise and fall of Tibet, the rise and fall of East Germany and the rise and fall of Rhythm Nation. And another interesting point, she was old for most of her life. The US is still at war with North Korea, China and the Soviet Union from the Korean War. Yeah, there was only a ceasefire. It never actually ended. It's estimated that Genghis Khan killed approximately 40 million people in his lifetime. It's also estimated that when he slaughtered the city of Urgench, he killed over a million people in approximately six months. London Underground opened during the American Civil War. Jonestown. All of it. The greatest and the worst humanity has to offer. Stranger than fiction. And fascinating. My cell phone has exponentially more computing power than was required to go to the moon. From the beginning of human existence, half of everyone who has ever died was killed by malaria. For most of the 19th and 20th centuries, the average height of a French person was less than the European average. This is because Napoleon put all the tall people in his army up front to smash through the enemy defenses and they died first. This makes sense when you take into account the enormous French casualties during the Napoleonic Wars over the years, 
At least 916,000 men were killed in a country of about 25 million. Drastically altering the gene pool when you consider that the men that died were disproportionately tall. By the end of the conflict the male to female ratio, which started at 1 to 1, was 0.857, short, males to 1 female. That in Canaanite mythology Yahweh, the Bible God, was originally the father of Baal, who the Bible would eventually call Baalzebub, another name for Satan, so it turns out Jesus might have a brother. The amount of people that have lived before us, obviously don't know the exact number, I just think it's insane. That in 1998 the Undertaker threw mankind off hell in a cell. Woolly mammoths were around at the same the pyramids were being built. Capital I, through the power of the internet, have seen more naked women than all my ancestors combined. The ancient Phoenicians had a number system that went from 1 to 60. For them to write 61, they would have written 11. The same people invented the measurement of the circle and decided that there are 360 degrees around the circle. The Boy Scout handbook says if you hold your hand out at arm's length, one finger width is about one degree of arc. Circle measurement. Till there are societies alive today that don't have any number system, they think with the concept of a few or many. A man survived both atomic bombs in Japan. Hitler had never been to a concentration camp. We sent robots to another planet and we are controlling them from here to explore it. Another ducking planet. The ancient Egyptian civilization existed from 5500 BCE to 2500 BCE. They lasted 3000 years being civilized and whatnot. They lasted more than the western civilization that we're a part of. And theirs ended before ours began. And there's little to show for it. Maybe some math and agriculture and three pyramids are left. But overall, those people lived for 3000 years. Imagine that our civilization ends. And the next one doesn't care about the internet or English language or legal system. They don't build on it. But ignore it completely and focus on other things. Unimaginable to us that have nothing to do with us. I'm not sure if you could call it a historical fact or just a thought on history but it's absolutely insane to me to think how fast computers have injected themselves into our lives. I was talking to my father about it. He was born in the 50s and to your everyday working jaw like his father they weren't even a concept or a thought. It's weird to think that in a span of 25-35 years is when computers just started to become used in businesses more regularly. Thinking about that time span is wild. My father, in his mid-60s, was my age when computers first started to become mainstream. His grandma, my great-grandma, shared a community line with everyone around the farming area. Now almost everyone carries around miniature computers that power our ability to communicate, read about and perceive the world. My nieces and nephews can navigate YouTube, something I don't think my mid-60s mother can do with any real skill. 117 years ago the concept of a computerized device allowing you to communicate with anyone and the touch of a few buttons would be science fiction. And going back even further, it would start to become straight up witchcraft or sorcery. Watch, peasants from the 1750s. As I conjure on my device the image of individuals engaging in sexual acts. You have a direct ancestor that predate the dinosaurs. You are literally related to non-human life forms. You are literally descended from simple organisms that lived in the ocean. A direct line. They are all your family. Edit to fix my boo-boo. We are closer in time to the Romans and Jesus than they were to the building of the pyramids. I think one insane part of history was the death toll of the American Civil War. I forget whether it was Gettysburg or Antietam. But I remember learning in my AP US history class that somewhere around 7,000 men died in 20 minutes at one point during one of the battles. Yes, that seems like a big number when you look at it, but really think about that for a second. For me, at least, I have about 450 people in my graduating class. My entire school is compromised of about 1600-1800 students overall, plus staff. To compare that sort of death toll to what I know today, it would be like everybody I know being mowed down in 20 minutes times 3. 
Death statistics of wars and conflicts can really go over our heads until we take a good look at them. The story of ABD Al Rahman Umayyad the first TL DR Guy's family rules the Arabian Empire, gets overthrown and slaughtered. Guy runs across Africa and takes over Spain. The sheer will and badassery it took to do it is just amazing. The only thing that stopped the Mongols from conquering essentially all of Europe was Genghis's brother died and the entire horde traveled back to Mongolia for the funeral. The effects of this are absurd and the ramifications it had during the Black Plague are pretty immense.